Crazy physics, absolutely incredible overtakings, more Asphalt 9 physics, nonsensical corners. Today I will have fun like a kid opening gifts, but instead of gifts, I will be using my soon to be golden Devil 16 in classic multiplayer. I know that I left you all with honey on the lips from my previous video showing how just with just a shock wave was all what I needed to win one race with this card in classic. And today I will show you more races with a card that I thought would be a pain to drive in classic, but that turned out to be extremely funny to drive. So let's get into it. Well, if you have been following me for a while, it's quite obvious that when it comes to in-game skills, I'm more of, you know, a casual player rather than someone who actually tryhards, and that's mostly why my skills are not top-notch, but in this video, that's something helpful to show how crazy this car is, because if I'm a casual and I can win this easily, an experienced driver will straight up nuke everyone barely trying. Well, indeed, it's happening already. <laughs> uh, this car acceleration is better than I thought for Classic because at a first look, it's, you know, 81 points. It's not really far away from the Jesco or the Hennessy Venom F5 accelerations. But as I said on my previous videos about this car, the Devil accelerate faster from zero to around 400 km per hour just to slow down when accelerating from 400 km per hour to its top speed, which basically means that you can accelerate pretty nicely with it at the beginning and then you only had to zoom past everyone in classic and that's it, an easy win. Also, if you look closely at most of the corners I take with my Devil, this car has another OP advantage against most, if not all, of the cars of this game, because this car actually accelerates while drifting. Of course, when you start drifting, you will see that speed normally decreases, but right after starting to drift, you will see how the top speed starts increasing, virtually making the Devil the only car that can take the Cairo 360 spin at over 5 150 km per hour. Doesn't matter from where you look at this car because it's the king of the game written in house size capital letters. And even if its top speed is hard to maintain, which is true, you can comfortably take over and win most of your rivals with an easy never seen before in all of the time I have been playing this game. For real, I can even compare the time when the Hennessy Venom F5 was released to this very moment. Focusing into something different for a second, I guess that at this point of the video, most of you guys already realized that I'm not anymore in pro team. I guess it's better to clear any kind of doubts now in order to avoid questions in the future. So in a nutshell, in the last few months, I basically realized that the atmosphere within the club wasn't the same as it used to be years ago. I don't know if it was as a result of, you know, most of the old members living in the previous years or what, but the thing is that I really like to talk and play with some really nice people from there, but at the end it got up to a point where it was no longer good for me to stay there and I took the decision to leave permanently that club. I have been in Pro Team for years and it's obvious to say that it's still one of the best and most solid clubs of Asphalt 9 without any kind of doubts, but I felt like it was time for me to depart. The club I'm at right now is not my definitive club, is from a fella I know from Discord who invited me while I was waiting for this class round to end, as I have been speaking with another club to join, but they are full and doing the current class round, so I have to wait a bit. I didn't want my rep points to be wasted, so better giving the current club I'm at the rep, rather than, you know, being a lone wolf in the remaining days of the current class round. I'm not the very best player, but I'm kinda active and I, you know, practice makes perfection, so I'm looking forward to join some definitive club soon. That pretty much sums up my current situation about which club I'm at and why I left the club I have been for so long. So if I get any kind of questions uh, from this video onwards, I will refer everyone to this point of the video, you know. Now that I'm talking about something different, I have heard a ton of people complaining about the fact that token relays are not appearing in the current race syndicate and so far there is no official confirmation from Gameloft aside from the fact that the bundles will indeed appear at a certain point in the future. I'm not sure if this delay is accidental since you know most of the devs have been out of work as a result of the Christmas holidays or if instead you know it's intentional, maybe as an attempt to make people more prone to spend releasing the relays at the last days of the Drive Syndicate so as a result of a potential rush 
uh, people, you know, tend to spend some cash in order to advance faster and get the relays on time. To be honest, I don't really think it's the first case, just, you know, an accident combined with bad timing, since the relays basically give uh, up to 250,000 syndicate coins for like 10,000 tokens, except if this time the relays are available by season tokens, which I personally think is quite unlikely. So what I'm trying to say is that despite the 250,000 season syndicate coins are certainly useful, won't give a massive progress boost for those looking to lock the level 16. Since you know at the end of the Venom F5 stage you have to get around 300,000 syndicate coins worth of level 16 packs in order to you know three start your devil and meet the requirements of the last mission in order to you know move in the final chapter where you can actually unlock the devil. So yeah the relays will help to save maybe a bit of cash and that stuff but at the end if you really want the devil you will have to spend a bit uh, one way or another. I mean real cash at the end. Of course, at the end of the day, the Drive Syndicate is an event strictly focused in those who are willing to spend in order to get a card that this time is just exceptional for literally every single mode of this game. The Devil 16 is the perfect representation of pure, incontrollable insanity made a car. The only car that is too powerful for most of the current tracks designed to handle, so it's so incredibly powerful that has where physics as a result of such a colossal amount of power being embedded into a long car. It's super light, super fast, and let's get real here, it's super fun to drive as well. Well, unless when you get were physics moments, but hey, it is what it is at the end. And in a nutshell, it's the perfect crazy and dumb car for an arcade uh, game. And you all know what is coming right after the current classic multiplayer season and where I record this, the races you just saw which is Ghost Slipestream, where Driving the Devil will be the closest thing to a wonder lab of crazy speed madness that I will ever get to experience in any game. So not gonna lie, in three days I will likely start preparing a video about this monster eating Hennessy Venom F5s in the streets, which I hope you all will like. But now I think it's your turn. What do you think about the Devil 16's performance in Classic? Is there any kind of barrier for this car? or you know, is straight up the king. Let me know in the comment section, make sure to drop your like, and I will see you really soon as usual with much more Asphalt 9 content. Goodbye guys.